right everybody so welcome to another Sunday stream from the Digital Llama and uh, yes yeah, something's different my beard is gone so um, yeah I did it as a little bit to um, mess with my wife because she always thought that moustaches looked silly so I shaved everything off except a moustache anyway it's growing back so don't worry about that um, but yeah there's loads of white hair in it now that I'm noticing so we've got that going on um, yeah, so uh, streaming some more EDH and continuing with the boss theme from last time, we're going to be playing my Kalemne giant tribal deck deck. Oh, the other exciting thing, green screen. So, ta-da, there's nothing, uh, you can't see the rest of my flat now. Um, still haven't managed to mess with the settings quite right, so my head looks a little bit fuzzy, look a little bit like Obi-Wan's ghost, but yeah, there we go. That is uh, just how it's going to go down for the time being. So let's create a game and see if we get any takers. Uh, so this deck is pretty straightforward. Play really big creatures, smash people uh, with Kalemne, hopefully. Uh, double strike vigilance and yeah, commander damage. Um, we've got a few tricks up our sleeve. We've got usual boss things, mask memory, that kind of stuff. So yeah, we'll just have to see how it goes. We've got two people jump jumping in at the moment, which is pretty exciting. Um, I've moved the chat box over slightly as well, and I am gonna hide the uh, game log as well, because that uh, on some of the stream replays on YouTube, it wasn't looking too hot. So there's that. For everyone that is watching on the YouTube replay, hello, thank you very much for tuning in to the channel again. Really appreciate it. Um, yeah, so let me know. Oh, we lost one. Oh, well. Uh, so yeah, let me know what you think about um, streaming. And um, I'm going to start putting up, at, gradually as my collection grows on NTGO, on the community tab on the channel, I'm going to start putting up some polls like what, would you, what deck would you like me to play this weekend on stream, that kind of thing. So that should be pretty cool, uh, more of that to come. And um, preference of decks is gonna go to uh, people that are patrons or members of my Discord server. So we'll do that, we'll hide the chat, we'll hide the game log, and finally look at a hand. So we've got two lands. We've got a Gilded Lotus, which isn't great, and yeah, not much else in terms of ramp. So we're going to mulligan it. Uh, two lands again. A Gilded Lotus again. Uh, so that's three games, uh, three hands in a row because I played a, a game earlier as well uh, off camera. And that cropped up as well. Um, let's keep it. So we've got Gargi, Honoured One. We've got Grenzo, Dungeon Keeper, Master and Kaikar. So... Um, Gargi on a oh okay, I haven't turned yield all on. Uh, so whenever a creature attacks one of your opponents or a planeswalking opponent control, that creature gets plus two plus naught until end of turn. Grenzo comes in with some plus one plus one counters on it, and you can put um bottom card of your library into your graveyard. We've just drawn another mountain, that's pretty sweet. Uh, what we'll do is we'll lead out with the Arid Messer and fetch our Shockland. Uh, mana base is pretty uh, basic. Uh, no, we don't want to pay that. Thank you very much. In this deck, uh, there's a few bits and pieces in here. Slayer Stronghold um, and the other one, Sun Home. And yeah, but uh, in terms of that I've tried to keep this deck as true to my paper deck as possible so there aren't actually uh, there isn't actually a plateau in here etc I should really go through and upgrade my MTGO decks because other people on here don't hold back at all and then Kaikar over here that was it so let's have a look at Kaikar relatively new so pretty familiar non-creature spells create spirit tokens you can sack spirit tokens to make red mana What's happened here? Bountiful Promenade into a Soul Ring. They've got a Peat Bog. Uh, so it's got two depletion counters on it. And they are going off. Uh, so they've got a Jeskai Ascendancy. Crazy. 
and we are stuck with not being able to do anything still at the moment. We drew a mirage mirror, which was in our opening hand before we mulliganed. Something weird is going on. I smell something fishy with this shuffler. So if you just joined the uh, stream, uh, yes, it is still me, uh, Sans Beard, looking a little bit more, well, I would say chiseled, except I've got a uh, massive double chin because I put on a lot of weight since I grew my beard. Uh, right, we're going to just cover beard chat and health chat uh, quickly first off. So get out of the way, is super boring, I know. Um, so yeah, I, when I um, started to grow my beard, it was about three, three-ish years ago. And I was quite thin then, I wouldn't say skinny. Um, I certainly wasn't in shape. I wasn't thin and like muscly. Um, but yeah, since then, obviously I've got married, become quite comfortable and quite large. Um, so when I shaved my beard off, it was a bit of a shock to uh, see my uh, chin and neck looking like that. Um, it took me like three or four days to actually recognize myself in the mirror, so. Yeah, anyway, health kick is kicking in. You might have seen me on past streams drinking um, out of a protein shaker. That's kind of like, it's not a meal replacement, it is just a meal. Um, so yeah, started jogging as well, um, which is great fun. I really love jogging. And yeah, just trying to start to look after myself now. And there'll be a bit more about that in Thursday's video is going to be a bit of a channel update. Hey, we got given a spirit. Nice. A uh, bit of a channel slash life update uh, with where things are, are going with the channel and that kind of thing. Um, positive stuff. Definitely positives, but a lot of lessons learned from the past few months, to be honest. So, Azra Oddsmaker is down. Right, back to the game. Life stuff's out of the way now. We're just going to focus on this. Um, so, yeah, they get to do attacking shenanigans very enlightening tutoring i have a feeling that we're going to left be get left behind in this game so this turn we could play mirage mirror and i forgot to pass that because i left my mana untapped so they put in all of the fetches then. So they're running off colour fetches. So they're obviously quite a, quite a highly tuned deck, I would imagine. Uh, what's going in over here? Nothing in their graveyard. Gadji, nothing there. But they have got the Sylvan Library down. So they're just about to cast something. Presumably Kai Car's coming out. Yeah, there we go. So three three flyer creates creates spirits. And a skull clamp as well. So they get to draw cards off the spirit tokens. Fair play. Oh no, it's two two. Ah, uh, that's the ascendancy, isn't it? Yeah. Just until end of turn, though. Hopefully, because I'm in quite a, a slow start compared to everyone else, uh, people will take it easy on me. Creatures you control gain first strike until end of turn. Uh, they sack the spirit. to play Magmatic uh, Insight. And they discarded what? A uh, Hallowed Fountain? Okay. So they sacked the Spirit again. And they got two cards in hand. Uh, to play in, is it Signet? So they got two Signets and a Soul Ring down, Skull Clamp, and their Commander. That is a crazy good start. Fair play to them. 
Yeah, that's the, that's the stuff that dreams are made of. Um, cool, so we've drawn another land. That's not bad, not bad at all. Uh, so we can play that, and yeah, I think if we get the Mirage Mirror down. Oh, thanks very much for the follow. Uh, for Hanks <laughs> Jerkov. <laughs> very clever name, fair play. Um, so yeah, thanks very much for the follow, appreciate it. Uh, this spirit doesn't have flying, does it? No, it is just a ground-based spirit. Let's see if they're going to take some damage and draw some cards. Um, no, they didn't. They didn't take any damage there, so... Yeah. Vandal Blast? Okay. So we lose the Mirage Mirror, and not too worried about that, to be fair. And yeah, they, they've set a Kaikar player back a little bit, which is excellent. Um, yeah, because they were <laughs> ramping like crazy. Chrome Mox comes out for Grenzo player. What does Grenzo do again? Put the bottom card of your library into your graveyard. If it's a creature card with power less than Grenzo's power, put it onto the battlefield. Okay. And they've shot down Kaikar as well, so they're taking care of that threat. Demonic Tutor, who gets the spirit? Oh, I get the spirit again. <laughs> awesome. Demonic Tutor is so good, not having to reveal what the what it is that you are um, searching for. So they're attacking into uh, the Gargi. How do you pronounce it? Uh, Gahiji, I think. Gahiji? Maybe something like that. Um, cool. So, yeah, a little bit of damage flying around there. Is there 1 1 Spirit token going to do anything? No, no attacks from them, but they are tapping to do something. And, uh, no, they were just tapping down, so it's me. Awaken the Ancient now. So we've got, um, yeah, turn one of our lands into a 7-7 seven, seven giant. However, I think we're just going to... Do we get the 100-handed one out? No, because we can't monstrous it. I think we get Kalemne out. Uh, so... Yeah, start hopefully gaining those experience counters. Uh, attack step, I don't think that we're going to attack anyone. We want to keep those spirits back as chump blockers, really. Not that anyone's got much on the field. So, if we draw another land next turn, that would be really nice, because then we can Gilded Lotus, and that will be some sweet, sweet ramp for us. Yeah, first hand wasn't great, didn't have very much in the way of ramp or card draw. This hand wasn't that great and I didn't really want to go down to six. Was that or shards? Yeah, I thought I recognised the art. Okay, so that might be a bit of a problem. Especially with things like electric. Electropotence and Warstorm Surge in this deck. That's going to, yeah, mess us up a little bit. So they are searching for a card, so let's open up the revealed, revealed card section. Uh, 
Um, so it was a Yavmaya Elder, so just some uh, ramp fetch kind of stuff. Uh, whose turn is it? I've lost track, so it's middle player's turn. Grenzo. Um, so their peat bog is gone now, so they're down to two lands. They're in a little bit of a worrying situation, I would say. They've still got five cards in hand. They've got a zealous conscript in the graveyard. Ooh, a Grenzo for zero on the X cost. Yeah. Uh, so they just discarded Skirk Prospector, uh, Sack Goblin to add some mana, and yeah, they were taking Gahiji again. They've got it in for them. Oh, I'm not surprised with that aura shards, to be fair. Chump blocking with the Imperial Recruiter. And round two, Kaikar now. So are they going to make a land drop? Because yeah, we're not actually looking that bad, to be fair. Uh, we've got a commander down, we've got four lands. Uh, yeah, could be doing a lot worse. Faithless looting. So just wait for them to do that. Oh yeah, I just realised, so they got given the spirit token over there, which is a bit silly, because as soon as they get Kaikar down, they're going to be able to sack that spirit uh, for mana. So yeah, you would have thought we would avoid giving, giving Kaikar extra spirits. Chromatic Sphere, so even more ramp again. So the spirits are pretty big now, to be fair. Um, but it looks like they're just going to pass it around. Yep, and we've got an Aggravated Assault. Uh, we don't really want to be playing... Um, Enchantments whilst there's an aura shards running around, unfortunately. So, what can we do about this situation? So, that is from five or greater, isn't it? So, 100 handed one won't trigger it. We could. Hmm. Yeah, I don't really want to enchant a land just yet, just in case the land gets. Um, well, the creature gets blown up. So, I think we're just going to move to combat, start dealing some command damage. Um, and yeah, let's go there first of all, because that aura shards is annoying. So, six command damage. Not bad, not bad. And are we actually going to do anything? Yeah, let's just get the 100 handed one down. Why not? It's a 3 5 blocker. What are they doing? Are they countering that? Um. No, it looks like they just drew a card. That's fine. As long as I'm not messing with my messing with my giants. Cool. Yeah, it looks like they were just uh, sacking to to draw a card. That's what the chromatic bobble does, or whatever it's called, sphere. 
Yeah. So, Gahaji player is down to 31 life at the moment. Are they going to take any more from the Sylvan Library? Yes, they have. They took both cards, uh, so they're down to 23 life. Okay, so Mana Vault. So those were some pretty um, vague at the moment announcements the other day. There was the unsanctioned, like the unstable um, game night kind of deal. So that sounds pretty interesting, especially if you're going to repeat, uh, reprint stuff from uh, Unglued and Unhinged. That might be quite interesting. Um, and yeah, I don't know what to make about those boosters either. They... Yeah, sound good, but yeah, not feeling it, to be honest. Um, again, like I said at the start of the stream, um, I'm going to cover it. There's going to be a bit of a what's been going on video on Thursday. But burnout and the relentless pace of these set releases over the summer has just played a huge part in it. So, uh, yeah, don't know how I feel about these extra special boosters. They seem to just be doing a little bit... Hey, I've got another spirit. They seem to be doing a little bit too much. Um, at the moment. So Cold Week was like a... Dark Ritual, basically. One extra mana. One less creature. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, they seem to be trying to take a lot of money at the moment, which they're a business, they're entitled to do, don't begrudge them that. But yeah, it's just left uh, left me feeling a bit, little bit dazed and confused. Uh, Priest of Gix, uh, went into Spoutfield, add three mana. And that, they triggered Grenzo. Uh, so mana, mana, mana. Mana Rock as well, uh, Mog Raider. Okay, so yeah, they've got a whole gang on board. All fairly low power stuff though, so not too worried about it at all. Um, yeah, especially since my two giants have got Vigilance, so. Yeah, there's that. Uh, Gaji is in place, so that's a 4-4. So, yeah, won't really want to be swinging Kalemne in that way. Or the 100-handed giant, actually, because... Uh, yeah, that's only power 3 at the minute. Still need 2 more mana to be able to activate that monstrosity 3 as well. Oh, have they just left? <sighs> oh my goodness. This is what I hate about MTGO. And I'm going to make... This is basically like a mainstay of the Sunday Llama stream. Uh, whinging about people that just leave midway through the game. It is so ridiculous. At least he didn't mess anything up this time before leaving. But it is just infuriating. Ah. So we're down to a three-player game. Um, yeah, we'll see how this goes. I mean, to be fair, they were stuck on two lands and they kept having their mana rocks blown up by um, Gargi player over here. But, I mean, the turn that they just had, they did a lot of stuff. They could have just hung on in there. Just have fun. There's no need to sort of quit. 
Um, so Kaikar's got a uh, talisman down. And looks like they're passing round. Cool, so we've got Myriad Landscape. It's not quite the land we were looking for, but maybe it's the land we deserve. <laughs> um, yep. And we don't really want to be playing any of our enchantments until that Aura Shards is taken care of. So we've still only got four mana. I think we're just going to attack. Uh, so we will leave Gaji alone, because that's a 4-4, but we will swing in over the other way. It doesn't look like there's anything that they can really do about that. Oh yeah, they get a bonus off of Gaji, the honoured one. I'm honoured. So they're only blocking one. Uh, they're only blocking Clemne, which is a little bit strange. Cool, so first strike damage took care of that, and then they're going to take 10. Um, or so I thought. Oh, no. Yeah. Sorry, my. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, that's taken care of a little bit of something over there. So they've got their Mana Vault trigger, and then they're going to have their Sylvan Library trigger. Hey, Stu. Thanks very much for tuning in. Morning. Um, yeah, so what time is it over there, buddy? I guess it depends which sort of um, coast or, or whereabouts you are with... 9.30, oh, not too bad, not too bad. I mean, it is a Sunday though, so that's still pretty early to be fair. So thanks very much for tuning in, appreciate it. So yeah, we are playing Kalemne Giant Tribal at the moment. Um, so it's from uh, one of the really old commander sets. So uh, whenever we cast a CMC5 or greater creature, then we get experience counters and then Kalemne gets bigger and double striking. Definitely too early for a beer. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Um, it's too early at two o'clock for me for a beer. Not that I've drunk much anyway, so just got a bottle of pop today. Yeah, Sun Titan. Um, so yeah, we're up against Kahaji, uh, the Honoured Ones. That was another commander, pre-con commander from way back. That came in the mail, the Anima deck. And Kaikar is over here, uh, Spirits. And they were doing lots of shenanigans. The middle player was, uh, was it Krenko or Grenzo? Grenzo, Dungeon Warden. How have they brought back Imperial Recruiter from the dead? I didn't really see what happened. Um, yeah, who knows? But anyway, oh yeah, Sun Titan, of course. I even commented that there was Sun Titan. <laughs> um, so they've got an Aura Shards down, which is holding up my hand a bit because I've just got some Wicked Enchantments and Ramp and anything that goes down is just being shot out by the Aura Shards, unfortunately. Uh, they're down to 18 though. They've taken um, one swing from Kalemne and they've dealt themselves a fair bit of damage from the library from drawing cards. they got a 6-6 six, six giant down now though. Um, yeah. Okay, so Joywa. And a Divine in top. Yeah, so we got off to a bit of a slow start. Uh, Kaikar got off to a crazy, crazy good start. Um, they just, yeah, ramped out massively and then got wiped out by... There was a Vandal Blast over here, which took them back down to three mana. And we've got another land on the draw, which is pretty cool. Uh, strip Mine. Don't think there's any targets for that just yet. Um, what is that? That's Aquino, isn't it? 
yeah so that doesn't really matter too much reflecting pools all right so yeah we might as well save it let's just yeah let's move we add landscape uh, so we'll tap those um we've got some mountains down so let's get ourselves some plains Cool, and then we've got three mana. I still don't really want to play the Electropotence whilst there is ore shards hanging around and there's no real other legit targets. The Talisman is going to be a lower priority than taking out that. So we've got Joyra. So I think we're going to swing in again at them because why not? So both get the power boost from Gadji. And whilst I remember, let's just yield to that trigger from now on so that it goes by a bit quicker. <coughs> See if they block the Joyra or the Spirit token. Yeah, so Spirit's chump blocking Calemnate. So we get another five damage through. So they're on 25, they're on 18, and I'm still on 39. So, yeah, I can't complain about that. At all, took one damage from the Arid Messer on the first turn. Whilst they're waiting and this whilst we're waiting and deciding what they're going to draw. So which um, whereabouts in the USA are you, Stuart, for it to be 9.30 in the morning? Are you more towards the, the Washington, D.C.? Uh, I should say, because there's Washington elsewhere, isn't there? Uh, New York, East Coast side of things, you're a bit more sort of West Coast based. They're taking a long time to decide. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Something big's happening, that's a lot of mana. That's an awful lot of mana. Oh, tooth and nail, okay. So we get to sit around and wait for them to tutor out what they want there. Next turn it might be time to Wrath, maybe. Um, it will send uh, Kalemne back to the command zone. Uh, crater Hoof Behemoth. Crater Hoof Behe Behemoth? Behemoth? Oh my goodness, Behemoth. And Gisela it looked like. Yeah, Blade of Gold Knight. And Crater Hoof, obviously. Okay, so that is, yeah, a lot of damage. Presumably he's just sort of splitting the attacks. They will get trampled as well. So that one's coming at me, that one's coming at me, that's coming at me, that's coming at me. Oh my days, so basically he's wiping me out. Okay, so what can we do? We want to... Yeah, I mean trample. We're probably gone as anyway, so... Um, it makes no real difference. 
Let's just throw all of those in front of there. Uh, we've got nothing in hand that's going to help us at all, so we're probably wiped out here. I haven't done the maths, but that's 22 damage. Yeah, that's commander damage anyway, isn't it? No, because I'm being block, uh, blocking there, so not quite enough for commander damage. Yeah, there we go. Minus 27 life. Fair play. So let's just uh, pop into the chat over here. Yeah, there we go. Um, so we are going to concede the game and we'll get another game going on. So that was the shortest match by far that we've had on the stream so far. Um, they've been sort of 90 minute long sessions, uh, but that's been pretty short. Um, I thought I just said concede. Uh, maybe we need to do that. Yeah, there we go, concede match as well. Okay, cool. So let's just go again uh, with Kalemne as well. Yeah, see if we can get any more players. We've got Merlin on board. Yeah, that just came out of nowhere. Gisela, double the damage. Crater Hoof, just pump everything up. That is brutal combination. I've got Crater Hoof in my Mael deck, so maybe I need to put Gisela in there as well. Um, goes slightly against the Beast Tribal, but that is a good shout, actually. I don't think I've got Tooth and Nail in there though either, so that might be another good shout. <laughs> Not that I want to, <laughs> to do that, but yeah. Fair play. Right, hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, this game there isn't a dropout at all. And that would be amazing. Oh, Merlin's gone. Great, so, yeah. I wonder how many actual players there are that still play sort of Commander on MTGO. Never normally have to wait too long for a game. Um, on weekdays and stuff, like when I have days off from work, I get the weekend off and I get one day in the week as well um, for studying for my degree. Uh, but sometimes pop on to play uh, some MTGO. But yeah, weekdays are not a good, like afternoons here in the UK, weekdays are not particularly great for, for getting games, unfortunately. Um, yeah, and have to do this really because... Um, some of the gameplay footage that I used to record for the channel just as uh, gameplay recordings rather than uh, stream recordings, um, I would kind of jump into games and wouldn't uh, announce that I was recording or, or things like that. And I just worried that people might get a bit iffy about it. So I'd rather sort of start my own game, clearly advertise uh, that I'm streaming over on Twitch in the comments and then it's up to people whether they want to join in or not. Um, I think that's probably the fairest way to do it. I don't know whether that then incentivizes people to pick um, meaner decks, perhaps, or more tuned decks, uh, so they can say, like, oh, I just beat this streamer kind of thing. I don't know if that's a thing or not. Um, but, yeah. So we've got one person back on board. Two persons, people, <laughs> two people. Um, so yeah, Knight R and Connor H07, yeah. 
Oh, hey there! <laughs> awesome. So yeah, thanks for thanks for tuning in. Um, hopefully, you won't glean too much from uh, what I'm doing uh, in terms of um, yeah, uh, ghosting me. Uh, that wouldn't be very pleasant, or <laughs> um, yeah, particularly the right thing to to do. But thanks for stopping by. Before we get the game going, appreciate it. <laughs> no, that's all right. I wasn't saying that you would would do it, um, but yeah. Anyway, cheers for cheers for checking it out. Really appreciate it. Yeah. So um, yeah. So I'm Tim, uh, digital llama in most places, um, and yeah, I make YouTube videos about Magic the Gathering, and streaming is something new that I'm uh, trying out. So yeah, here we go into the game. Uh, so let's yield all. We will give people a good luck high five. I like that. And then look at our hands. So we've got one land and a talisman. That is awful. This has got 20... Uh, <laughs> fair play to you, mate. Um, so we're going to mulligan that. It's basically giant tribal. There's nothing too complicated to it, to be fair. Um, that is better. We've got three lands. We've got command sphere, boss charm. So yes, yeah, second time is a charm. Uh, Yarok, okay. Um, so yeah, Nightar in the chat is playing Yarok. We've got Atraxa. And we've got Athreos. So this is looking like a brutal game. So if a permanent entering the battlefield... Uh, oh yeah, it's the Panharmonican one. I keep thinking that it's a um, dredge. Uh, the other one, can't remember the name. And then Athreos. Uh, so, whenever another creature you own dies, return it to your hand unless an opponent pays three life. And they've started off with a Shadowborn Apostle. Okay, so it's one of those decks. We've got a Cavern of Souls. Uh, we've got nothing that comes into play tapped, so we might as well just lead out with that. And we're going to name Giant. Cool, right. Um, so also what came down was the joke. Uh, drag a tree speaker, so it's one of the level up cards. Uh, so it's basically turns itself into a mana dork and then turns all elves into mana dorks. Um, so yeah, uh, tracks are proliferating, should get up there, no problem at all. Shadowborn Apostle, let's just remind ourselves, sacrifice six of them, search for a demon, and put it onto the battlefield. Cool, so then Mana Crypt in. And they're just levelling up. So it is now uh, able to add two green to it by itself. Uh, I've got no idea what how many ticks uh, this deck is, to be honest, mate. Um, it's, yeah, it's not super expensive at all. I mean, Cavern is in here because I have one. Um, but, yeah, I haven't sort of blown the budget. I've got uh, only the one strip. Uh, only No, sorry, not strip mine. Only the one fetch land in here. I'm not sort of running all uh, off-colour fetches and things like that. Um, but yeah, Giants on the whole are pretty budget. Um, okay, fair play. 15 ticks. Uh, what are PD? PD decks. Powered down, I guess. Uh, 
Um, so yeah, on the channel, I'm sort of a pretty big Boros fan and massive fan of tribal decks as well. Yeah, I thought because Yarox, um, is it M20? Yeah, it is. So that's going to be quite pricey, I would have imagined. Uh, Soul Ring, that's pretty cool. So if we uh, play out the Soul Ring and then we can play Commander Sphere as well. Is really f for the win. Yeah, to be honest, it's my favourite guild. Um, I've always loved Boros. Uh, Aurelia, the War Leader, was my first uh, deck that I built. There we go, and we've got Commander Sphere down. Oh no! <laughs> well, yeah, you don't have to have Soul Wing in every deck. I've got a couple of decks that I don't have it in. And we'll pass the turn. Yeah, some decks you can kind of do without it. There are other mana rocks available. I mean, admittedly, it is pretty awesome, but yeah, it's not the be all and end all. Uh, oh, when did that happen? So yeah, two Shadowborn Apostles and an Arena Rector. So when it dies, you can search for a Planeswalker. So maybe it's not Elves. Maybe that is just a Mana Dork, sort of early turn Mana Dork. And it is Super Friends, possibly in the middle. Um, on and off, mate. Yeah, um, I started playing in 4th edition, <laughs> showing my age and yeah I've had a few breaks along the way but this is my uh, most recent stint has been starting just before Kaladesh actually um, was when I got back into it I'd taken like a, a five or six year break before then and then when Kaladesh came out um, I got into it uh, RTR I played for a little bit around Gate Crash as well um, and then dropped back out of the scene and yeah, I've been um, making videos and, and playing ever since Kaladesh again. So yeah, I would have loved to have played during uh, RTR block or um, original Rav Ravnica, that would have been incredible to play. Oath. Yeah, that is absolutely insane. 12 hour stretches on WoW. I never got sucked into the MMO RPGs, um, to be fair. Um, yeah, I used to play Warcraft 2, the RTS. That was amazing fun. So yeah, Warcraft 2, Warcraft 3 a little bit, and uh, Starcraft. Um, but then never followed it as that developed into, into RPGs from the RTS format. Um, thankfully, yeah, stuck with stuck with RTS. I started playing Dawn of War. I also play Warhammer, so the Dawn of War games were pretty awesome. Okay, Thaumatic Compass. Um, so we can, yeah, Thaumatic Compass. Um, why did that not just auto pay? That's annoying. And let's get the good old Kalemne out. <laughs> I 
Yeah, definitely Old School Blizzard. Um, Diablo 1 as well. <laughs> me and my mate uh, Tom um, lived in the same village as me back home. Uh, we used to play it all the time. It was so much fun. But yeah, trying to play uh, like Warcraft 2, Warcraft 3 over old dial-up modems, that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, and no one had laptops back then, so if you wanted to have a LAN party, you actually needed to take your PC around to your friend's house. Um, yeah, crazy days, but they were awesome. Hey, another land drop, fantastic. So yeah, they're now up to, up to three lands, which is good. Uh, not to see Nightar fall in, fall in behind. Rexage. What's going to be the target? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, right, let's pass that, see where the... see what the target's going to be. Yeah, I think that's why... Okay, thematic compass is going. Fair enough. Um, yeah, that's why we uh, then dis migrated onto like the N64, because you could just plug four controllers straight into it and just play GoldenEye and Turk 2. Yeah, if we could, if we could try not to swear, that would be awesome. Um... So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 12 hours of <laughs> golden height. Um, yeah, we used to do that on sleepovers. Um, yeah, I think they're releasing, a, I think it's like the 25th anniversary um, of it which is going to be amazing, and they're re-releasing it um, for the Switch, I think I saw, but might be wrong there. <laughs> yep, RPG-90. Smothering Tithe, now there's a good target for a Rex Age. Yeah, and there was a burger bar in town called Burgerfest, and at the front they had kind of like a lounge sofa bit with an N64 there as well, and one of the games that they had was Goldeneye. Have they just wheeled? Is that what's just happened? Time Twister. Okay. Oh, the, uh, the Smothering Tithe. Um, obviously it wasn't out when you played it, so it doesn't actually matter. Um, but yeah, Smothering Tithe is a brutal card, as you will now see, because they are going to get a ridiculous amount of treasure. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Smothering Tithe with any kind of wheel effect. So they've got themselves a whole load of mana now. <laughs> um, yeah, so it was the Time Twister. Um, I think I was chatting so I didn't spot it actually being cast. Each player shuffles their hand and graveyard into their library, then draws seven cards. So what have we ended up with? We got Mount, uh, some more lands. Slayer Stronghold's pretty useful. And yeah, we've got some other cards here that will start um, start to trigger Kalemne and getting ourselves some experience counters. Bit of an anthem effect as well. Okay, lovely. Uh, so Ugin's just come down and decided to kill off Kalemne. Um, 
and just had your Rex Sage killed as well. Which had, oh, is that the oath? Yeah, activate uh, loyalty abilities twice. Okay, Tamio is down now. So Ugin is now up to uh, 11. Yeah, okay. Yeah, scary, scary stuff. Uh, Aphios won't have counter spells in there. Um, goodness knows what this person's got in the deck. They're spending a bit of mana though. They got four cards in hand. Uh, no, Planeswalker's not a creature. Um, it's its own thing. It's basically like a, an extra player, as it were. So when you make an attack, you can elect whether you want to attack the player or the Planeswalker. Um, but they just took out our creatures, so <laughs> yeah, got nothing to do, nothing to do there. Oh, and the tracks is down now as well. <laughs> Athios players just given up; they've gone home. Fair play. I would have liked to have seen what that deck was going to do. Am I being swung out for one damage from the arena rector? Yeah, tracks a brutal card. Love it. So they get counters on. Oh yeah, their elf gets counter as well. We've got Legion's Initiative. Would have protected us. Smothering Tithe. Do we want to pay? What else could we do? So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana. So we could pay it. Yeah, I think that's the right thing to do. Um, so yeah, drop a land down. And I don't think that there's anything that we can really do about that, unfortunately. So yeah, I think we'll go with this as the plan. Um, yeah, and that is it from me. Uh, so potentially, um, Ugin's got enough to ultimate really here. However, if they do, it means that they're not going to be taking care of the ringleader unless they've got something else in their hand. Um, yeah, looks like um, this is going to be a, a one-way ticket to, to Pain Town. Excellent, another land drop and rampant growth. Right, let's see what shenanigans get going on in this turn now then. Uh, so they've got four treasure, they've got a fair amount of land, they've got Ugin 
uh, who's potentially ultimatable, and Tamio is as well. Um, with an omniscience, so they could just minus seven Tamio straight away uh, now. Obviously, she would um, die, but yeah, they would then omniscience. Oh, wrong land. Oh, gutted, mate. Yeah. Frantic search. Okay. Uh, so what does Ugin do? Seven permanents from your hand onto the battlefield. Cool. So you don't get to tutor anything or from the top of your deck. So yeah, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to find what they want to ultimate off with. Okay, so what are they going to search for? Okay, so did they search for the brainstorm? Oh no, so the Brainstorm brought out the doubling season. That was right, I missed that there then. Really wish that they'd bring back sort of the different rooms. <laughs> yeah, yikes indeed. Yikes indeed. Oh, and there's Liliana Dreadhorde. Okay, um, so yeah, obviously we'll keep that. Uh, we'll keep the soul ring and the land. Is that right? Uh, no, we're we're pretty much dead. Uh, they've just um, wiped us down to one land each and. Yeah, that is GG's. <laughs> uh, they got some zombies. Yeah, so let's jump in the in the chat. Let's just GG that, I think. Um, so I'm gonna ride out, I'm gonna stick around and see exactly how they're going to how they're gonna do me, do me in. Um, because it's quite fun. Um, but yeah, that was, um, yeah, they just went off and it's a really powerful deck to be fair. It was a shame because I had the mana this game as opposed to last game. So, and I had the giants in hand, so we would have started triggering, uh, Calumnies. Yeah, planeswalkers, um, really aren't, unfortunately, especially these ones. Uh, these ones are particularly uh, potent. Ugin, just being able to come down and shoot anything is, yeah, powerful stuff. And certainly I don't, um, but yeah, I just need to... Uh, yeah, with the, the amount of treasure that he generated off of the uh, Time Twister, with the Smothering Tide, that kind of tipped him over the edge. Uh, what am I doing? Who knows? Ah, oh, fact of fiction. Um, who knows? I don't really know what I'm doing. 
let's just do that. Not that it makes a difference at all. Yeah, I don't think there was any real way to, to stop this from happening. I certainly don't pack enough Planeswalker, uh, enough ways to deal with Planeswalkers in my decks. So... What did they just do? Time stretch. Yeah, I think we're just going to quit, to be honest, because uh, this guy's just going to keep playing with himself. And no one wants to see that. Uh, I've already GG'd, so... Yeah, there we go. So yeah, that was quite an uh, interesting game. Uh, fair play. Uh, tracks are uh, super friends. Super powerful. Uh, shame that yeah we didn't get to see uh, much of what your Yarok deck uh, would do night R. But yeah, that would have been really good to see. Um, so I'm going to call it a day there for the stream. Um, it's, it's a tough one, really, why people um, play like that. Sometimes people just get enjoyment out of that. Sometimes, like I suggested earlier, some people might see that I'm a streaming and want to almost show off, as it were. Um, but, yeah, we get um, options put in captions, like where I put my stream in. So, like, this person here has asked for casual decks. Uh, this person's asked for fast but casual players. And sometimes you get people asking... Um, for uh, like the problem is that there's C E D H and then there's just sort of casual kitchen table E D H and on N T G O the two just smash together without any real way of being able to um, <clears throat> to tell really you can't really set up sort of boundaries as to as to who you want in your games or not. Uh, you don't get the same sort of flexibility of discussing stuff with your playgroup down your LGS, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, fun nonetheless. Um, so you saw a little bit of the Kalemne deck. There's the deck tech on the channel. It hasn't really changed much since then. I've put in the new giant from Throne of Eldraine, the one that kills all non-giants. That's pretty fun. Oh yeah, I could do uh, buddies only invite, um, to be fair. So yeah, um, that is something that I am looking at setting up um, in my Discord, that if people join the Discord, then they get sort of buddy access, that kind of thing. Um, I haven't really decided who to limit it to or whether I just open it up to everyone. To be honest, it's something that I need to give some thought to. But yeah, really appreciate you dropping by. Bye. That's crazy that you saw the link and then just came into the chat. So thank you very much for that. Cheers to Stuart. Um, yeah, really appreciate you dropping by and chatting so early in the morning. So I hope you have a really good day. You've got the rest of the day ahead of yourself. I'm now going to edit this ready to go onto the YouTube channel tomorrow. And then I'm going to try and put some thoughts together for this channel update for Thursday's video as well. Awesome. Yeah, hope that you have a fantastic day, night art, wherever you are in the world. I hope that you have a good day too, sir. And yeah. Cheers for stopping by the stream. There'll be another stream next Sunday, 2 p.m. Oh, Denmark. Amazing. That is where me and my wife um, are going on our honeymoon. Uh, and we are coming to Copenhagen. Um, so that is absolutely amazing. We're going to go next September because I'm a uni student. And um, have to do it during the summer holidays effectively. But yeah, we want to uh, stay in Denmark and we want to do a bit of traveling around. We ideally want to try and get all the way over to Billund because um, we're massive Lego fans. And I'm not too sure where Jotland is, to be honest. I uh, haven't looked into it just yet. But yeah, there's a few different bits and pieces we don't just want to stay in in Copenhagen. We want to do a bit of traveling around. But yeah. Um, yeah, um, hit me up on uh, any of my social medias. Just search Digital Army, you'll find me anywhere. And yeah, would love to love to chat to you more, buddy, if you're if you're up for that at all. Uh, so anyway, I will catch you all soon. And yeah, cheers for stopping by. Had an awesome time. Didn't win, but yeah, cheers. <laughs>